Up next, fast-tracking foreclosures. Stay with us. House Bill 87 on mortgage foreclosures is awaiting Governor Rick Scott's approval. If signed, it could speed up the foreclosure process to alleviate the current backlog. But if someone's house is foreclosed and a judge faults the bank, does the homeowner get their house back? Maybe yes, maybe no. Our next guest joins us to tell us why Roy, Roy Oppenheim, real estate attorney at Oppenheim Law, joins us. Roy, good to see you. You know, the, the idea that House Bill 87 should expedite foreclosures may not be such a good idea. You think it's not. Why? I, I think it's a faulty construct. I, I think, in fact, as do many other people, that if and when, and I think the governor will, will unfortunately mistakenly uh, uh, sign the bill, uh, I think the bill is actually going to impede the foreclosure process. It's going to... Uh, change the rules in such a way that they're going to have retroactive effects, uh, unconstitutional effects, affect property rights, uh, distort the, the entire process. That's terrible. You haven't said one good thing that's that even remotely positive. The idea of moving, uh, what, what, what's the idea of fast tracking this, first of all? Well, you have two diametrically opposed concerns that, that have been uh, uh, part of this foreclosure process for an extended period of time. You have the state legislature and the Supreme Court that really wants the dockets, the thousands of cases that are languishing in the court system to be cleared up. Why are they languishing in the court system? Because the paperwork wasn't filed properly? Because what? And that's a complex issue. But the main reason they're languishing is because the, 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 the Treasury Department, through Geithner, as well as the Federal Reserve, really didn't want the banks to move their, their foreclosures quickly. They didn't want them to move them quickly for a number of reasons. One, they wanted the process to be bled out through the, the last presidential cycle, and they also wanted to make sure that uh, we wouldn't have a literal depression, a, a, a catastrophe, an economic catastrophe where Which people would be would living under bridges. Which there would have right. been. Furthermore, if the banks would have been able to ram through all their foreclosures too quickly, the value of the banks would have dropped to the point that most of them would have been insolvent by any description or characterization that we have. So what had to happen is the process had to be bled out for an extended period of time so that we could recalibrate the entire economy. And in all fairness to them, that has indeed happened. So if you make it, if you fast track it now, how does it not create the type of damage you just described? Well, they, they think the banks are stronger and they think that the real estate economy has, has come back and that it's now time to, to clear out this backlog. Having said that, we don't think and I say we, we're talking about a lot of judges, we're talking about a lot of homeowners, we're talking about a lot of lawyers, lawyers who, who are opposing actually the Florida bar itself who thinks this is a good idea because we think it's going to add fuel to the fire and as one judge recently said, it's going to be like Abbott and Costello's comedy routine. It's going to be like who's on first, you know, what's on second. House Bill 87 benefits whom? Uh, lawyers. It's going to benefit people like me because without a lawyer, you will not be able to get a fair shake in the, in the process. It's going to be absolutely impossible. Why, is, why should an individual under an, in a current foreclosure process be particularly worried? How do they fight it? How do they get fair representation? Okay. One of the biggest problems, and, and again, this is the tail wagging the dog, is that if you lost your house through an illegal foreclosure, through forgery, robo-signing, uh, through fraud, through, through just tactics that, that, that the banks had to pay $25 billion for, for this kind of improper illegal conduct. As uh, fines. As fines. Assuming you were part of that process. Historically, you could actually have gotten your house back if you can prove that. This new bill will deny you the right to ever get your house back. You may be able to get money by suing the banks, but if some new person after the foreclosure moved into your house because the bank sold it the foreclosure sale historically that person would have to move out and you could get your house back and the title insurance industry would have to pay that that new person who who moved into their house thinking they got a good house all this changes all of that completely where now the only thing you can do is sue the bank the new homeowner will not lose his house and his new homeowner will not have to file a claim against his title insurance so what is, agent so what is the original homeowner get in return if they if they win the suit if they win the suit they could get some sort of compensation for the for the improper foreclosure of their home but they will never get their home back which is ironic because you know you just had had a, had a criminal defense lawyer on about Trayvon Martin and, and this whole notion of being able to protect yourself in your home or in your own you know, you know it, the home being your castle and it seems that, that we have thrown out the baby with the bathwater as it relates to the construct of your home being your castle and having some unique importance in in in, in the economic history of the United States there's always uh, 
uh, lobbyists uh, and, and representing groups right. who are in support of House a bill, every bill in Tallahassee. Right. Who were the groups that were supporting House Bill 87? Okay. You said lawyers when? No, but the lawyers were, were, were on both sides of the fence. So you had foreclosure defense people who will actually do well with the bill, but they were at odds with the traditional real estate lawyer who primarily does title insurance work. So I think we were at odds with, with our own real estate uh, and, and probate section of the bar because within that, within that section we had real estate defense guys, foreclosure defense guys like ourselves, and you have traditional real estate people who, who do title insurance. So I think... You said I'm sorry, you said that this was going to hurt Roy property values. How? Um, I, I think it's going to hurt property values because while the governor thinks, and this is where he's so misguided, that this is going to speed up the process, as many judges have said, they're the ones who are saying this is going to be like a, a who's on first Abbott and Costello skit, that there are so many changes that are occurring. Some are going to be retroactive. Uh, some are unconstitutional. Some deny property rights, that you're going to have all kinds of new uh, challenges to this bill and that every time there's a foreclosure uh, the banks are going to have difficulty pushing through their foreclosures because of some of the new constructs that are created in in this bill the banks are going to have to show that they own the note if they don't own the note they have to show who owns the note they have to show every time it's been transferred if it's been transferred five times they have to show who transferred it when it was transferred and how it was transferred the who's bank, on first right. who's on second and they don't have the capability of doing that they just do not wow. So it's very expensive for the banks to be able to go through this process as well, as well as the individual. I, I think at the end, if you ask me who are the two winners of this bill, the only two winners that I really see are clearly the title insurance folks and the homeowners associations think they're the winners, and they are not. They are also misguided and have, and have been fed you know, some improper Kool-Aid. So uh, if, if Governor Rick Scott signs... Uh, and you have reason to believe that's I, going I to occur. I have reason to believe that he will, and I think he is terribly misguided, and I don't think it's going to help his reelection. So when, how soon are we going to feel the ill effects of this legislation should he sign? It, it won't be like in the first week or two. I think it's going to take several months, but probably within a year. So by the end of the year or the beginning of next year? People will be scratching their heads saying, you know, what were we thinking? And, and I could see the legislature next year trying to do a, uh, some sort of re revisit to figure out what they did that was wrong. Roy, you said that this was something that the original policy was um, put forth by the federal government to try to stop um, people being kicked out of their homes right. and under right. bridges. And it, you recognize that it's had a good effect. Other states must be going through similar issues. Do other states have bills similar to expedite foreclosure, to the best of your knowledge? Not, not to the extent where we're stripping people of their constitutional property rights, as we're, we're about to do here. What is re what, what does the, what does the recourse? Someone who's watching this program, what recourse do they have? What would you recommend for them to do should they be in a foreclosure process? Okay. We have said for the last seven years that people need, again, uh, taking a, a, a page out of the Trayvon Martin situation, they need to stand their ground. Anyone who moved out, you know, made a big mistake. They needed to stay in their homes for numerous reasons. There were all these new government programs that came out that helped them. You had the settlement. You know, people got you know hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars if they were in their home and 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 were in the process of being improperly foreclosed. And in many cases, if they actually fought the foreclosure, they are winning a trial. We win at trial much more than people ever think we we could have won. Where we can prove that the bank doesn't have standing, the bank doesn't have the promissory note, the bank doesn't have the right evidence, the bank just can't get through the process. Because now you said this is. And, and very quickly, you said this is retroactive. Yes. Give me an example of how this can be applied retroactively. Well, there, you could be in the middle of a foreclosure case, and all of a sudden the rules of evidence have completely changed in terms of what you have to prove versus what the bank has to prove. And we're shifting the burden of proof, and there's this thing called an order to show cause now that all of a sudden you didn't have before, and now you have. So we're like changing the rules in the middle of the game. And, and that, that in and of itself is unconstitutional. And more important, it just, it, it just strikes everyone as just being completely unfair. What is it with, being, with retroactive legislation lately? I mean, it, to me, it just says lawsuit. Right. I mean, it, it clearly does. I mean, the, 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 what's ironic is the governor did veto the, the, the divorce statute. Based though, on, right, ba he right, argued that it was right, because of the retroactive right, and, and, principle. Exactly. And so he's picking and choosing when he wants to apply that as a reason for, for uh, vetoing a bill. And, and I think that if he wants to be consistent and, and have a consistent policy and have people respect him, then I think he should, he should follow through here and veto this bill for the same reason. We're out of time for this segment. I'd like to thank Roy Oppenheim for joining us today. Thanks, Roy. Was, have to have you back. I would love to be back. Thank you.